I think we'll press on there with the eye catchers, putting more on from Hugh. Uh, throughout uh, the programme. Let's talk about Geising. This is an interesting horse, a four-year-old, Geldin's son of Manduro. Um, just had the one run, as far as I can see so far, at Wolverhampton. He was third here behind a horse called Premium. Yeah, this is a, this is a, a time-based one, really. This was running a really good time, this, this race at Wolverhampton. Now, the runner-up, excellent puck, ran yesterday in fact was the horse who finished second to Burgoyne and I wouldn't I wouldn't see that as a negative at all that he got beaten um, because again the the front three in that race pulled a long way clear but um, Geising obviously giving lumps of weight in terms of weight for age away to the two three-year-olds uh, and it's quite tough for older horses in maidens at this time of year because they do have to give weight away to less exposed horses and I thought this was a really promising mm. debut. He was 25 to 1 wasn't he so he was pretty much unfancy. unfancy in the betting um, and he's, but he's, his damn trick or treat was a very useful mare on the flat and already um, Geising's half brother won on heavy ground first time out last season. Um, and so if this, this might be an interesting horse on a soft ground maiden, he's obviously interesting as well kept to, to Polychap, but on a, in a soft ground maiden, um, he, he might be an interesting horse in, in the coming weeks. I thought this was certainly the time of this race. We're starting to see the better three-year-old maidens now on, on the all-weather, mm. as we will on turf, obviously, and, and I think the front three are all above average. Yep, Barry Hill's horse you can see coming through to win the race. Oh, sorry, Charlie Hill's horse coming through to win the race late on. Um, and the horse in second, second again, as you mentioned there yesterday. That's Geising, who ran well there for a long way uh, at Wolverhampton. Street Artist, the next one we're going to have a look at. This is a horse so who's a son of Street Cry, trained by Mark Johnston. He made his debut just a, a few days ago at Wolverhampton here, finishing second, Hugh. Yeah, there's been one or two Mark Johnston maidens who've run similar kind of races on debut recently on the All Weather. Ambleside was another one at Lingfield, in that they've not really looked like they were completely sure what they were doing during the early stage of the race. You can see he's being ridden along there um, and looks for quite a lot of the races though he's going to finish unplaced and, and well beaten. And this was a race with, that favoured the favourite as well, uh, favoured the, the eventual winner in terms of the pace scenario because um, it wasn't a run at a strong pace. And you'll see street artists, the penny finally drops in the closing stages. And although I don't think the bare form of this race is worth a huge amount, because there's, there's four finished very close to each mm. other and it was a fairly messy race in terms of pace. He's going as well as he's ever gone at any stage of the race um, at the finish. And I just think that it's just a timely reminder that what Mark Johnson's three-year-olds do uh, over the next couple of months is they stay very well. And we'll see a lot of them win maidens and we'll see even more of them probably progress through middle distance handicaps and staying handicaps, the three-year-olds. Mm. And um, he's one, I suspect, that we'll see running over one mile four furlongs and possibly mm. further in times to come. It was an encouraging debut. As I say, there's been, there was another one, Ambleside, run a very similar race at Lingfield the other day. And um, I think it's just, just really a reminder that he's, he seems to have a lot of horses that stay very well, three-year-olds at this time of year. Mm. Yeah, I can see what you mean, because first glance, the form doesn't look great, does it, with Smalley Monterg, who's sort of a selling hurdle horse in third. But yeah. as you look at the racing and the way he stayed on, you can, you can see Yeah, and you, you watch the, the, the way he, he was... Whether you call it greenness or whatever, but it just took so long for him to get a, any idea of what he was meant to be doing in the race, and he did stay on in the closing stages quite well. So I think he'll improve quite a lot for that run. OK. Another horse to have a look at now is a horse called Hasso Pop. He won a race on very heavy ground. Remember that race he won at Newmarket last season when it was absolutely bottomless on July Cup Day? Um, he made his comeback run here at Lingfield um, at the weekend behind uh, T.O. Phillip. This was a good run. Yeah, T.O. Phillip's a stable mate and runs in the same colours with a white cap. And... Uh, Hazel Pup was dropped in from his wide draw and he's not going to get anything like the run of the race. Um, he, he's, he'll get stopped, hampered, uh, no clear run and he's emphatically better than the result. Um, his form was a bit up and down last year and I think I remember reading once his trainer said he was a bit of a character but he's been gelded since he last ran and you can see his rider just can't get any sort of a run and he loses a lot of momentum as well and I thought he did p pretty well to pick up and he finishes about fifth in the end I think. Mm. Uh, I thought this was an encouraging reappearance. <laughs> the only question mark in my mind is he also ran a very good race uh, on one of his two other runs on Polytrack when he ran in a group three over six films at Kempton and he finished really well and it is in the back of my mind that he might just be a Polytrack horse whether he can transfer this back to turf or not. He's, he's run well, as you say, he won on, he won on 
uh, soft ground on turf. He's, he's, he's run well on turf before, but I do think he's, that's twice now he's finished with a flourish on Polichak and he might just always be a horse to, to bear in mind on that surface. OK, so look out for Hassapot there, perhaps on the Polytrack at next time out. Um, a horse to have a look at now is uh, Edwin Ralph as well. I saw this horse run at Lingford a few runs ago. I think he was, a, he was uh, behind Ray Ward that day. He's won since then. He beat R. Yal, who then went on to win a little race at Southall the other day. Um, he finished second at the weekend behind Poetic Verse here. Yeah, and this, was, um, this is not the first time that... Um, uh, a Rod Millman horse has caused a bit of an upset in, uh, against perhaps uh, less exposed horses. But um, Edwin Ralph, again, isn't going to get the run of the race in the closing stages. And uh, he, he's kind of ridden along from, from quite a way out. And he doesn't get a clear run and he has to be switched inside and out. And meanwhile, the eventual winner gets switched to the outside. It's a very good ride from Andrea Atzane, who's, who's riding extremely well, builds up momentum and challenges widest, widest of all. You can, you can see Edwin Ralph, really green he's just, colours, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's just struggling again. to get a run through and he loses momentum and again that's that's always a big, um, uh, that has a big influence at Lingfield if you lose momentum and he manages to pick it up again and he's, he's finishing well at the finish. Um, I think he's probably improved for run, running over one mile four furlongs mm. and although they've finished again in a bit of a heap. Do you see again here he's the red, red cap in behind, yeah. he's, oh, he's Really taken back there, isn't he? He's lost yeah. a lot of momentum, as you say. Yeah, and it's and meanwhile the winners winners got got up ahead of steam down the outside, and once they're in front down the outside at Lingfield, they seem to they're, they're hard to beg back if you're on the inside and you've lost momentum coming around the bend. So I thought that was a good run. Yeah, he's definitely one to look out for. That's Edwin Ralph there for the uh, David Simcock operation. He should be able to win a race very soon on the or whether you would imagine he's won once so far. So these are the four we're going to go with. Guising, who we saw run a promising third at Wolverhampton. Street Artist, who stayed on well to be second on debut. Hassa Pop, who ran well in the listed race at the weekend. And Edwin Ralph, who was arguably unlucky in defeat last time. I think I can see a, I can see a reasoning behind all four of those. So Yeah, I mean, some, some weeks it's there's not many thrown up. I'm sure we'll get plenty of eye catchers when once the turf starts sometimes it's a bit of a, a grind on the all weather trying to find something that really is a lot better than its result but um, there's a few there anyway okay now some horses that caught your eye at Cheltenham as well last yeah. week I know that Cloudy 2 was one that you put up in the the handicap chase on the first day he was still there with a chance at halfway and you, you were still taken by his run yeah the two I've put them both up actually the first two I've put up and it's not uh, I'm, maybe I'm kidding myself a little bit uh, in terms of those but they both race quite wide and on the first day and second day on the old course when the going wasn't too bad I thought that the it was a disadvantage to be racing wide. Perhaps later on in the week, it wasn't such an advantage as, the, as the, especially on the Friday when the ground softened. But um, Cloudy too, he did go really, really wide, and he 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 looked like he was getting back into contention with about half a mile to go. And I think he's he's probably got enough weight now, maybe, and um, it was perhaps a step too far at this stage in his career. But I, I still like this horse. I think there's. Um, He'll, he'll do well in time. I think he's a horse that Sue Smith will do, will do very well with. Our Mick has been running consistently well in these big handicap chases around Cheltenham. And he's, he's just unlucky in that he's run into one who's mm. produced a, the, the Colin Tizard horse whose name is Golden, Golden Chieftain, Chieftain yeah. who's, who's produced perhaps a career best. He's kind of threatened to be a good horse at times, Golden Chieftain, but he's, he's run away with the race. Our Mick's finished second. Again, he's... He seems to be taken wide for most of his races. That's not the first time he's run at Cheltenham and has gone, has disputed the lead, but been perhaps three wide throughout. And I thought it was a, a very good performance from him. And he's been left on the same mark from what I can tell. Um, and something like the John Smith handicap chase at, at Aintree, he's going to be one of the leading contenders if they go there because he's, he's definitely well handicapped. Uh, just unlucky to run into one who's mm. produced... Is, he was on the long day, wasn't he, Golden Chief? And he's that sort of horse you couldn't guarantee he'd repeat that, could you, next time? Oh, absolutely. And he's, he's gone hurtling up in the weights as well as a mm. result. Um, sometimes if you, if you finish second to a, a horse that's just produced a one-off performance, you, you end up getting left on the same mark, which is what happened, what's mm. happened to our Mick here. And effectively, you've beaten all the rest. So I think he's, he's still very well handicapped. There's plenty of evidence to say he is. OK. The Coral Cup is always a competitive affair. And the horse who was fourth in this year's renewal is Master of the Sea. For Nigel Twiston Davis, who had a good week with a couple of winners. Um, this ran behind uh, Medinas and uh, Meester Eckhart and five for three. And uh, you're encouraged by this run? Yeah, this is a horse I've followed all season. I've put him up a couple of times uh, on, on the website as well as selections. But I wasn't really interested in him at all this day because he was dropping in trip. And I didn't think the ground was soft enough for him. His, his best form has come 
A, on very testing ground, and then I thought he took his form to a new level when he went over three miles last time. So to finish where he did in such a competitive race, I thought was really encouraging. And he's won very much to bear in mind, because I think his marks, he might have gone up a pound for that, but he's pretty much the same mark. And um, back up at three miles and on more testing ground, I think he's still going to be very well handicapped, and I think he'll be a good horse next season as well. OK, Master of the Sea, who was winning at uh, Newbury, of course, uh, earlier in the season. We'll have a look at uh, one of the Nicky Henderson, Simon Manier horses. Uh, now, Megalipos, I think this is, uh, ran behind Flax and Flair in the, um, the Fred Winter race. Yeah, this is a bit more of a speculative one because he was beaten a long way. But to be fair, this was only his second start for the yard and he was thrown into a, a big field handicap. Uh, and his jumping wasn't didn't quite hold up to it I didn't think and he was given nothing like a hard time once he was beaten he traveled okay up to the home turn and he's just won out, out of all the horses that were beaten a long way he's one that I think might leave that form well behind uh, next time either next time or next season if we don't see him again he the fact that Henderson ran him in a, in the grade one hurdle at Chepstow uh, on mm. his British debut where he probably would have finished second with a bit more luck in running um, if everything had, if the, 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 uh, there was another horse fell at the last as well but um, I think he's certainly going to be a horse who will make his mark off his current rating which I think is about 135 um, he was beaten a long way but I'm sure he's better than that OK Quite a few of the horses who were held up in the county hurdle never really got into the race, did they? I mean, it was a strange race. Tennis Cap sort of had the run of the race out in front. Ted Veal came there cruising and, yeah. and eventually got by him. And, and so many that were held up and just never never got into it. Yeah, and if and but why not, who I've put up as, as in, in, from, from that race, he's a horse who is threatening to, again, to be a lot better than his current mark. And he, he was taken very, very wide. Now, to be fair... To Timmy Murphy's jockey, he took him very wide when he won at, uh, at, at the Cheltenham meeting back in October or November, whenever it was. Um, but he did go very wide this day and he travelled well for a long way and he just seemed to run out of steam in the straight. Uh, he had to be switched to the inside. Uh, but he travelled well enough to suggest that he's still capable of making an impact off this mark. P possibly just, just doesn't want it quite as testing as this. I know he's won on very testing ground, but that was of a lower mark. And I, I, know, I know his trainer said in the past that he might be better on good ground. Mm. If you look at his form, yeah. you can make a case either way. I remember he was very impressive on good ground in a bumper at Newcastle um, yeah. a couple of years ago. But he has got form on soft ground and he has run moderately on good ground as well. But I think he, he needs to settle uh, and get a, a nice strongly run race mm. perhaps not as deep as that ground and I think there's a, a, a really nice handicap in him one day I think he's off was he 1-3-5 at the moment yeah. so you can win off that you think uh, I definitely think so yeah ok that's if and but why not make your mark as a horse who was quite well backed uh, on the Friday as well he ran for the uh, the Willie Mullins operation he had some good form as a novice uh, uh, this horse and he was disappointed behind Rock Critic I think at Ferry House in his first run of the season but he, he fared much better behind Salubrious I thought yeah Giggins Townhouse stood they, they had a about very, five in this race, didn't they? I yeah, think. well, they had a few in uh, really interesting race, but the, the whole week they had three, I think they had four runners up, three in grade one races. Um, so just an unlucky week for them. And this was a horse, by this time the ground was really bad, and um, any horse who was remotely keen during the early stages was always going to struggle to to finish the race off. And I thought this horse was just a little bit keen in the early stages, and he travelled through the race really well. And I think he's just found the test too much, but I think he's gone through the race like a horse who's ahead of his handicap mark mm. um, and he's he's one that I would want to keep on side for I don't know punches down or, or wherever Aintree wherever he goes next and um, and next year as well because he didn't run too bad he did he, the novice race behind Simon Sieg last season he's, he, um, he, I think he was six or seventh in that wasn't he fair enough forgotten about that actually it was it was just this run there were there were two or three interesting ones from the stable mm. um, I thought and I thought he was he was a big eye catcher in this race for sure yeah he was written by Declan Lavery, uh, of course, last week. That's Make Your Mark. We'll look out for him as well in the coming weeks. We'll